Are you ready to join me in transforming fear to freedom? That's the objective of the show. Are you ready to explore with me and my guests? Are you ready to get into the deep and play? This is where it's at, and that's what it's all about. No medical advice here. Use discernment and decide for yourself if the information is right for you. All views and opinions expressed on this show belong to the individual and are not necessarily shared with the producer of the show. Want more details? Go to Let's Get Real Chat with Catherine.com. Now let's get real and have some fun. Who are we going to explore with today? Come on with me and let's get into the deep. Hey, welcome back to Let's Get Real, Chatting with Catherine. Today, I'm going to be chatting with Dana Merkic. I am your host, Catherine Whalen coston and um, I'm producing this series of shows, which we are now in our seventh season, and I'm so excited about this. Dana Merkic is coming to us from Australia. We have lots we can catch up on. I know she's been picking up on a lot of these energy shifts that many of you are feeling. I know I'm feeling them, the global changes and shifts, and I'm really looking forward to getting into what she's picking up, what insights, because she's always got a positive way of putting the truth uh, out there, what she's picking up from uh, her guides and the energy. So let's get into this chat with Dana Murkic. And if you want more information about her, the rest of the shows, go to lgrcc.com. And don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends because that's how we really are going to transform fear and move into freedom, exploring higher visions. It's time, don't you think? Let's go. So we are back once again with uh, Let's Get Real Chatting with Catherine and the wonderful Dana Merkic. Uh, I'm saying to people, be careful what you're thinking and what your thoughts are because this is why back to the global picture, um, you know, we focus on what we want, focus on yeah. the reality we want, focus on humanity being connected, focus on human rights being met, focus on everyone having enough food, water, shelter, housing, education, clothing, focus on pe people treating each other and the planet with respect, focus on that because now more than ever, what we are focusing on is happening. That is true on an individual level. It's true on a collective level. So if, if, if what we're thinking is manifesting so fast in our personal lives, as a collective, can you imagine the power that we have to either – Stay in that same old, same old reality or create something different for ourselves. Yeah, and also to be aware, like you can, there's power in the word, there's power in the thought, there's power in our voice. But when you, you know, if you're on social media and you're responding to, you know, you see something, you're responding, you can use certain words and think it's diplomatic but if your energy is not diplomatic, you're not feeling that. You're, you're right. writing the right thing to be tactful. But in your mm. heart, you really are saying some nasty things. You're probably going right. to get some feedback. That's, uh, and then you think, why do they respond to me in that nasty way? Well, because they picked up on the words. Yeah. That's, so we... That, that's... Yeah. So we're, so, so we're in this power, power place. But... The other thing, I know you you talked about this before about the energy vortexes or vortices on the planet, and I heard this from somebody else. Um, so the so these places where there's this very dark um, history of violence and so forth, and I mean we have them in North America. I'm sure you have them in Australia. Places where there's been a lot of violence and whatever. Um, and somebody was suggesting that that this um, light is trying to open up and that mm. there's a uh, sort of a, a real effort to keep it from happening. Like there's, there's beings or whatever trying to keep the wars going because it keeps the darkness, which will keep this, these mm. vortexes or vortices of, of mm. light from opening up. And that's why that we're seeing it escalate because they're going to open. I mean, there's enough yeah. light beings, there's enough, um, angelic help and so forth to do that, right? It's just, a, yeah. am I on the right? Is that true? Is that why we're seeing this? That like these places are critical to our thriving? Yes. Yeah, I, I've i personally looked at that particular vortex over the Middle East just because I've always, even as a little girl, I always had a fascination with the Middle East. 
I actually remember crying <laughs> to my mum because I wondered where was my magic carpet, you know, and I used to tell her I was from Baghdad and I had such this affinity with the Middle East. And right. I remember reading tales of the Arabian Nights, you know, <laughs> little girl and just loving it. And, you know, as I, you know, explored and, and delved a little bit um, more, from what I can gather, I, I feel, um, and I'm sure this is sort of, you know, verifiable by other people saying similar things, that I think that there's a, whatever you want to call it, you know, vortex or energy, and I think, I feel that it opens up every X number of years, you know. So that particular... Um, that particular uh, geographical region is where the Sumerians were, you know, and we all know that there's a lot of wisdom that has been repeated in all the ancient prophecies that were in the original Sumerian tablets, for example. And I just feel this sense that I was there. I can just feel it, you know. There is also um, people who feel that, uh, some of the original star people that came to this planet, um, that's where they came through, came, came through that. It's like water. a portal. So, like a portal, that's it. That's the word. So, and then when I was asking about this, I said, okay, well, what's the big deal with this portal? The, the, what I sort of visually saw was that this portal opens and it was almost like a, a battle of sorts of who will get in first, hmm. you know. Um, do, 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 do the light people get in first or do, do the dark kind of energies want to kind of retain control of it, as it were? And so that's sort of the, along the lines of how I sort of feel it and see it. I feel a thousand percent that light prevails. Just physics, higher vibrations yeah. cancel out lots of vibrations. But I do feel that as a, as a new incoming energy um, opens up, um, it is just nature, human nature, you could say, that wants to resist that. If something has been in power and control for so long, of course it doesn't want to let go of that control, right? Yeah. I also feel very strongly that that's why it was so important for so many um, divine sparks, awake people, conscious people, star seeds, whatever you want to call them, to incarnate onto the planet at this time. It's like there needed to be a, a, a grounding anchor for that light to be able to to come in mm -hmm. um, to the level that it's going to come in. It is going to come in. I actually feel that the show isn't over yet, so to speak, in terms of what we are going to see in that I feel that our evolution, yes, it's a process. Yes, it's something that we're now going to – we're in the middle of and it's going to continue, continue, continue. Mm -hmm. However, I still feel there's something that is going to happen that is beyond our uh, – beyond our ability to comprehend at this moment. So, yes, I feel there's evolution going on and we're in the process, but I just something – my waters tell me that there's just something that we're not aware of that we can't comprehend at the moment that will be the big thing that will really change the game. I feel that strongly. I don't know what it is. In a um, positive way? Or Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In a positive way. <clears throat> in a positive way. Um, if I had to put my finger on it, I would say something that really wakes people up to know, wow, reality is bigger than we thought it was. Life is bigger than we thought it was. We're, you know, whether it's knowing that we're not alone or whether it's some big light in the sky that, you know, makes us realize, wow, we don't know all that we thought we knew about the cosmos or the earth or whatever. I, I feel definitely it's something positive. I don't see and I never did see you know, we, we got told a lot for years about these earth changes and global, you know, blah, blah, blah. you know, that's on another timeline. I, I don't, that's, I don't feel that true for our planet. When, when people um, prophesied and saw the waves, we've been in, we've been through that and we're in that now. That's the energy waves. That's the energy waves, you know, the energy waves, you know, that are coming to us from the cosmos, the energy waves that have been coming to us you know, via the solar flares because the sun is like a portal, you know, through which then energy waves go and come to us and activate us and awaken us. So they're the waves, you know. Yeah, that is that is profound. And I think, I mean, that's, that's basically how I'm feeling too is like 
let's just stop feeding the fear and the dark and the whatever because that I mean it just perpetuates more and it's not you know I do I, I understand where people are coming from when they say oh you know uh, all the woo woo love and light and everything's going to be all right and that's we've been saying that for 60 you know years well that's not true be, because for one thing yes the movement in the 1960s started they were talking about love but they weren't um aware of the higher unconditional love they were re it was a sexual revolution as much as it was any other yes there were other civil rights and people were were talking about it from that level but not at the consciousness level that we're at today yes yeah, so many times when i write my uh reports they always refer to these you know the, the incoming energies as waves but literally almost as if i'm writing about ocean waves mm -hmm. and they use those analogies so many times but you know and, and i think that the waves have been coming. I almost see now that we're in the waves. So rather than they're sort of coming over us, we're in them. Um, but every cell in my being says something, there's more. There's something more that is coming or going to happen. It feels good. It feels positive. I always say to people, you know, when they say, is there anything to fear? I'm like, fear is staying in the reality that's been the reality for the last God knows how long. You know, that's my fear, that it stays the same. Um, I, 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 I couldn't imagine, it, it can't stay the same because how many thousands, if not millions of us have come on the planet, Catherine, and we all have the same knowing, we all have the same feeling, we all have the same vision. And, and it's not a matter of, oh, you all read the same thing, you all read the same books or the same, no, no, no. most people, I think, had the feeling first and only later maybe met someone or read something that, that made you think, oh, God, I'm not alone. And how so, many of us were squashed down as children before we, because, I mean, that's my experience as a child, tell, saying things and being told to be quiet. I challenge, you know, like, it was like the adults around me were afraid of my knowing. And it wasn't that I was actually, I wasn't saying anything about spaceships or anything. I just had a knowing yeah. about life, a certainty, a confidence, and that was squashed down. How many kids were beaten because they could see things? So to me, that heavy resistance that was my generation, your generation, you know, just we're a little bit yeah. different, you know, just it feels like there was such a heavy resistance. They weren't reading us those stories. Those parents were not reading us about, you know what I mean? They're, we didn't read all the same books because that wasn't our generation. There's, there's too many um, mm. people that have, like you say, that knowing before anybody ever... As a matter of fact, there probably are people listening to this today that are finally saying, I think it's safe now. I can take off my mask. Yeah. Yeah, and what I really love, you know, one of my favorite things on my Facebook page with comments is when someone is on there like that saying, oh my gosh, I can't talk about this to anybody and I, I, did, I don't even know how I found my way to this page and <laughs> I'm not alone. That's all people want to know, that they're not alone and that other people are feeling this way and thinking this way. And what I also find really confirming and positive and exciting is listen to what children are saying. You know, when you, you hear a five-year-old or younger, you know, saying, oh, you know, mom or dad, this is, oh, this is what happened and this is what's going to happen and then this is going to happen and listen to that because they, they're really our new, they're, they're our new teachers and they're our new leaders and thank goodness, you know, they don't have to come in and clear all their stuff. They're clear and, you know, in an ideal situation, they're being born to conscious, awake, aware parents who are nurturing that in them. You know, I'm, I'm doing my best, you know, with Jackson. We have a three-year-old and, you know, doing just our best to not not overlay anything on him or repress anything on him. And when he says, when he starts talking about, oh, we're all going to go to another planet, you know, <laughs> okay, you know, what's it called? Where is it? What does it look like? Exactly. You know? And to not make fun of them or make little of them because... They do yeah. have an awareness that we don't have. And um, I, you know, the one thing that does, 
concerned me a little bit and it sort of brings it back to where we kind of started about the energy changes and the new kids coming in and I mean I think a lot of people are aware we're seeing it everywhere kids that we used to it was so rare child prodigy or child this or child that and they're just coming in so much more open and, and ready for you know yeah do you think that there's any connection I don't want to go dark but I do want to sort of for people sort of looking at it between the contamination of our food, our water, you know, the fluoride, the vaccines, the toxins, whatever. Do you think that there is a an effort being made to prevent these little ones from bringing forward their gifts, or do you think it's just um, and 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 if even if it is, do you think that that's even possible that that these kids um, will be shut down because of our food, our air, or, you know the it's kind of a toxic environment all around in some yeah. ways. Oh, yeah. I, I think that there's a definite um, effort to not only shut down, numb, numb down, dumb down kids, everybody. Mm. It's, it's an effort to do everybody. Now, where it gets a little bit even more complicated is, is it a conscious effort on the part of people who create these kinds of foods and toxins, etc., or something that I was talking to someone about the other day is, just as we can be influenced by our higher guidance and our higher consciousness and higher wisdom, when people are maybe of a lower vibration, and when I say lower vibration, it doesn't always mean um, negative and evil. Lower vibration can mean if you are subject to being easily influenced, if you are of a lower vibration for other reasons, um, you know, susceptible to things. You can also be influenced by the lower vibrational, lower dimensional energies off planet, you know, yes. um, non physical. So sometimes I think it's not necessarily that there's some sort of, um, you know, evil scientist in a lab concocting all these things, going, ah ha ha, I'm going to get you all now. Yeah. That scientist may well think that they're doing a good job. But if you are open to perhaps, you know, a level of influence that you're not aware of, that you're being, you know, influenced, influenced by, by that you know, you think you're doing a good job or you think, oh, this can't hurt. Or, you know, how many people do you know who, oh, the occasional, you know, McDonald's can't hurt or whatever. Yeah. And okay, sure. I must admit when I was a little kid, I did have occasional McDonald's because we didn't know as much as we know now. We didn't have it often, I must say. Mum was a big health person. But um, certainly now, knowing the ingredients, I read the ingredients in their fries the other day. Oh, my God. So, like... Now, knowing what we know, and you don't even have to be a so-called conspiracy person to, to just look look at what it does. Look how you feel if you have something that's heavily processed or really, really high, high, um, you know, a content that's, you know, yeah. the high first concept. You don't feel good later. Yeah. You don't. And so... I, how can you, okay, going back to the children, as an open, aware, conscious child, and if you're constantly being fed very heavy, dense, processed food, if you've got a lot of toxins going into you one way or the other, how can you possibly maintain a clear mind, let alone a clear, awake soul? So, you know, for myself, um, you know, I think I spent the majority of my 20s just clearing, shoveling, just clearing all my stuff. And I think I went about things a bit of a, you know, Extremes. opposite way. Mm. I know a lot of people do all that stuff as they get older and da, da, da. I almost feel like now I feel younger than I did 20 years ago <laughs> because I, Me feel too. I, I cleared all that stuff. And I, everyone is looking younger. Like, like everyone looks, no one looks their age anymore. Everyone no. looks young. Everyone actually feels like they're getting younger. Yeah which is crazy. I love it. I intend so, that when I'm doing my meditation, I always say yeah. that I'm using, I use the energy as a, yeah. Yeah. As a, so I think, you know, if you, you know, to, to keep the kids, you know, awake, conscious, clear, just, you know, feed them decent, good, healthy foods. When high they, vibration. When, high, when they draw something, when they, um, you know, say something, don't shut them down. Be conscious of what perhaps they're exposed to in terms of the television. You know, I'm, I'm really aware if something is on that's like, hang on, no, 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 no. This, 
uh, you know, I don't want Jackson hearing that sort of story or languaging or words or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but also and it's not important to... to not put them on a pedestal either. Like they still need guidance. Yeah. Like you do see that sometimes people will, oh, my child is really gifted. So everything that comes out of the kid's mouth or everything they want, they give them because they know because they think their kid is so much yeah. smarter than they are. And that's yeah. not what it is about. They still come into the world in a little tiny body and they still need parents to oh. guide and well, it's like <clears throat> typical example you know like Jax has just started kindy for the first time which is really exciting and this morning on the way there he asked for an ice block right that's that's not him being all wise that's him wanting an ice block somehow after breakfast no, <laughs> no. you're not having an ice block after breakfast um you can have it later but you know, but yep. generally speaking, very, very in touch with his foods. Very, when he knows when he needs some cheese, he knows when he needs some blueberries. He, he, he's ever from, you know, from the second he was in my belly, actually, I had very specific cravings for, for fruit, you know, and I, I think I had more fruit that nine months than I've had my whole life. And he's just always been like that. He loves all his vegetables and he's just very um, conscious of eating very healthfully. You know, okay. maybe he's going to be a chef. Yeah, maybe. No. <laughs> well, and, you know, he'll be a very healthy person just the same. But yes. here's a little twist I'm going to throw at you just because mm. I know we're just, we're really um, ready to conclude here. But there are people who have come to a place of high vibration that can eat or ingest or whatever poison or toxin or whatever there's these I don't know any so and I'm not recommending anybody at home do this don't hear you know I'm asking it from a higher uh, expansion what's possible because I've kind of when I learned about that what felt right to me is you can pretty much eat anything if you do it with the intention that it is going to support, you know, that's the, I mean, that's the thing about a breatharian. Yes. So you can make that, but you've got to be consciously making that choice. Yes, yes, yes. And I agree with you. We're not now saying to people, I'll oh, go out and test this out on your local cleaning product. No, it's more, um, there's a huge difference. Basically, it comes down to, Are you feeling good when you're eating this or are you not feeling good? Because I'll I'll tell you this. If you feel like you just, I just really want to have that ice cream with the chocolate and the nuts and I feel so good. It's a beautiful day. Oh, my gosh, I'm having so much fun today. This reminds me of being a kid and happy. I'm going to eat it. That will do you more good then shoveling fruit salad in your mouth thinking, oh, God, I hate it, I hate it, but I have to eat it because it's good for me. Yeah. Truly. It's it's about how you feel when you're eating it. And not that, feeling that, guilty afterwards. Oh, That's the other yes. part. So, yeah. So if you're eating something going, oh, this is so bad for me, this is so bad for me, I shouldn't be eating it, this is so bad for me. No. That 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 is bad for you then. So – my feeling is if you have something, if you feel a craving for a bag of crisps or an ice cream or whatever, eat it, but love it. Eat it, enjoy <laughs> it, sit down, go for it, you know, yeah. and and just love it, you know. Yeah, and, and then and you won't be having that need to, because I think it's the guilt and the shame and all that jazz yeah. that makes people eat more of it because it's, oh, you just can't, yeah. you know. If you could yeah, just love it and say, and no, give yourself permission. If you want some tomorrow, you can have it, but chances are you won't. I'm like you with that with the chocolate. I always have chocolate in the yeah. house, always. And always. I have it when I want it, but I don't have it every day. But it's, yeah. you know, but I have other yeah. family members and they're like, how can you still, you still have chocolate? And like sometimes I even have to throw it out because it's like been there for so long. And they can't. Because they, they've got it into their minds that if it's in the house, they must eat it. And it's just, it's, it's, it's just a different attitude. I'm, yeah. No, I'm exactly the same way. There's always chocolate in the house. I can take it or leave it, you know. And 
genuinely, like how I eat is a very, I guess I just eat intuitively as in what I feel like eating, I eat. Mm -hmm. And when you truly do that, do you know what? More often than not, you just gravitate to whatever foods your body really, really wants. Mm -hmm. And and that's just it really. And I, I have zero guilt if I feel like, well, I just eat whatever I feel feel like you yeah, know that's that's exactly how i do it and i and it's no um yeah i don't have any of this oh god that's bad for me blah 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 mm. and you know so but that's yeah. what i think it's important to stop um you know if we really do want peace and harmony this i said this the other day on facebook like we have to recognize that our words can be violent and mm. by telling people they're wrong you know making them wrong all the time like it's not helping like everybody's doing the best they can and we do shows like this to help give people a little insight and help them to know you're not alone and you don't get rid of the guilt and the shame and the blame and stuff is actually not just about us we've got to let it go for other people and if we really want to move into this you know because that that's where I really want to um I feel that that's part of my job is to share with people people who have a positive point of view and you definitely have that, Dana, and I really appreciate it. Is there anything okay. else you want to really get across to people that you really feel like? I mean, I I I've I will put the links to your website and to um, uh, your book. I guess is your book. That's something I wanted to ask you about. A new chapter is that still available? Can people still get it? Yeah. A new chapter is still available. It's available on things like Amazon.com or BookDepository.com is also great. Um, they have global free shipping, which is really wonderful. So that's still available. Great. And, you know, I feel like sometimes I feel like, you know, there's more books in the pipeline. But having said that, things move so fast. I can, you know, I, I write just an energy message or an energy report and by the next week things have changed. So yeah. I don't know how books are going to go in the future because things just move so fast. You know, um, you know, but I, you know, of my online courses, which I, I love and one really unexpectedly came out about, you know, love and relationships. And that was the last thing that I thought I'd be writing an online course on and no, it, it came out, it came out strong and fast and clear. So, you know, a lot of people are doing that now, which is really wonderful. And, you know, right. and I more time now, which is really, um, exciting for some other new things that I've wanted to get going. So I guess. What, what do I most want to tell people right now is we have um, the ability and the potential now more than ever to really create the reality that we came here to create. Be conscious and aware of that with your mind, um, with your thoughts, with your feelings. And if you haven't already, um, there was a writer, a metaphysician in the 1920s called Florence Scovel Shin who wrote The Game of Life and How to Play It. And she's got this tiny little book. She wrote about four little books. But if you just even read that one, I think even most of it's available free online. And oh. she basically, you know, nearly 100 years ago now, she was, you know, a, a pioneer who, who basically um, held the vision for people. Clients would come to her and they said, you know, things like, oh, my health is not great or, or I don't have any money, I've got $2 left or whatever. She would hold for them a vision and say, in the divine mind, there is no lack. In the divine mind, there's no ill health. And she'd hold that vision for them of you are abundant, you have all that you need, you have that two thousand dollars you need for your rent, or you have that, um, you know, you have your your body is completely healthy and well in the divine mind. Anything else is is an illusion. And hey presto, that person would be well, that person would get uh, money. So that kind of thinking and that kind of mentality that was so edge thinking back then. You know, that is where I feel we are now. And, but we and can't, before, before this just, this last energy, January of this year, we could do it for others. But now we have to do it for ourselves, right? Yes. So yes. her information is correct, but we have to do this for ourselves. And I guess we could do it for our world. That would be... Mm -hmm. Mm. I'll get the name yeah. her uh, I'll get some information and try and put it on the video too for people because I've never heard of this woman and I'm, I'm intrigued I have to oh, heard she... of Dolores Cannon but I have not yeah. I think I may have read one of her books but not um, a lot of them but like a lot yeah. of the things that were prophesied before like Edgar Casey or Nostradamus 
we basically changed it. That was the beauty of them prophesying it. We changed it. We we don't have to have Armageddon. It's not going to happen. We chose something different. And I think yes. that pe- people get hung up on, oh, they weren't right. They were right. We chose yes. different. It's like, if you go down that road, yes. you'll get in an accident. So you go down a different road. You never know what happened in that other road because it didn't yes. happen. Yes, 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 absolutely. And that's why, you know, in my in my sessions... You know, I never go into future stuff and that's not what I'm about. It's more, well, this is where your energy is at. And if you don't change your energy, you're going to probably go down that way. And that's probably what you're going to create. But if you change your energy and if you do this and this and this, that's what you're going to create over there. And I feel that's, you know, more, that's, that's one empowering. of my rules. I shine the light on people's energy. You can do what you want with that. And Do you still you know, call so, it soul sessions? Is that what... People, yes, soul sessions, yes, yeah. I call that soul session. So okay. basically, information comes through regarding what's in your energy field, where your energy field is at, what what the root is of current patterns. And you know, I kind of joke that you know, I give people homework. Well, I do give you homework because I I say you know, this is what maybe you need to shift or need to change, or this is what's where your thoughts need to be, or whatever it is. It's always different. And so, well, usually if someone's coming to you, they want to do the work. They want to change change their yeah. life. I mean. Yes, yes, yes. And I set that intention. I've been setting that intention for years. Please, you know, bring me all the people who um, need what I have to offer, who are ready for what I have to offer. Mm-hmm. So I feel really just blessed, really, because I just have awesome, amazing, wonderful clients. Everyone on my Facebook page is really just wonderful, engaged. Um, yes, yeah, you have a busy... Yeah, busy conversations, which is really nice. So you can work with people, um, how do you do it, in person or just on Skype all over the world? How how are you doing that? Uh, For the last three years, I've specifically um, specialized and focused on written sessions. So I haven't even done in person um, or Skype for a few years now. So essentially the information... um, Email better. You mean like through email? Well... It comes through in a written document. So someone, um, you know, books a session. Um, I give them a date where it's going to be done. So, you know, it will be scheduled in and they can expect to receive it that day. And when I sit down to do the session, I tune in exactly as I would in an in-person or in a Skype or anything like that. But instead of it coming out of my mouth, it comes through written form, much like my energy messages come nice. through that you've read. Um, it comes, blah, 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 blah. For a full session, I type. It's always about an hour. Lately, for some reason, it's getting longer than that. I thought, oh, you know, in, I thought, oh, wow, this year, you know, people won't even need sessions. You know, I'll be doing something else. No, no, no. The, the sessions are becoming longer, more detailed, coming from higher places. I, I stop writing when the tap stops flowing. You know, I don't – people say, oh, you should set the clock. I I just can't. I, I, I aim for that hour, but if it goes over, it goes over. And then when people receive that, so it's you know, a Word document that they receive, they read through that, and then in their own time, they respond with their thoughts, their feedbacks, and any follow-up questions. So that's when we get our you know little exchange and our dialogue um, happening. That's wonderful. And, yeah, and I just found that it's just a different kind of a session. I know some people still do like the in-person or Skype with someone, and that's fine. That's a different kind of a session um, that, you know, they, there's plenty of people out there doing that. This is more, I guess, of a um, – it's a stream of consciousness and an energy excavation that I found for whatever reason doesn't come through in that same way when we're both speaking because I guess we're both just out of the way. Our Yes. Our – our, 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 our physical presences are out of the way and it's just download of information comes through yeah. without, without... Well, a- I have a feeling, though, that even though, like you said at the beginning, more people have crossed the bridge, they're light workers, they know they're on the other side and that's fine and um, they probably still often need a little bit of help, but we have all those people that are looking over and seeing the light. Yes. They are going to they're going to start, and and maybe it won't take them so long, but I, I have a feeling they're still going to be looking for people who can just not do the work for them, but to help them have that insight, you know, support. Well, do you know, yeah, the analogy that got given to me um, the other day when I was writing these messages, and I don't know if I've written a report on this yet, they said, 
will be acting more like you know when you get to um say a, an island and you have the people who do the meet and greet <laughs> show you around you know julie on the love boat with her clipboard <laughs> that sounds perfect <laughs> you know because it's not like your our jobs are now redundant it's like People will, people are arriving. They're arriving en masse every day. We're yeah. all like Julie with the clipboard. Did you ever watch that? Yes, I did. Boat? Yes, you know? love boat. Yes. And, you know, and that's right. You still need people to say, "Here's how this works, and here's how that works, and here, here are the restrooms, and you know, here's the healing room." And oh, when you get a little bit stuck, as you might, you can use this tool or this tool because they're coming now en masse. People yeah. are coming every day. New arrivals on the love boat. Get it? Yeah. You know. They, so we're there with our clipboards and showing them around the island and the boat, whatever. Yes. That's no, I, that's I exactly right. And I just, the difference yeah. is it's now we, I think one of the big barriers is gone. There's no more, um, well, no, no, but there's a, not much of the woo woo. Oh, are you going there? I mean, people I've seen, even on my Facebook, you know, page, people that before, wouldn't to never they wouldn't even be on my friends page like I have my my yeah. the fan page for the show but then I also have a, a friends page which I have more discussions and interactions but um I mean those people wouldn't be there um 20 years ago there's just no way yeah. so we're yeah. we're learning that we can be politically one way we can eat certain ways we can think certain ways and we can have dialogues discussions explorations we don't all have to fit in that same box and I don't even have a crystal ball so I mean <laughs> yeah well this is the thing yeah it's it is whatever it is and I you know um I'm I, not I saying like I'm against ball. crystal balls I'm just mm. saying I don't have one <laughs> yes yeah you know? yeah and I'm not I'm not big on that either because I don't know I just I like to more refer to myself as a conscious person or an awake person aware person mm -hmm. sometimes that word spiritual got a bit commercially polluted somewhere along the yeah. line you know there's certain connotations of what that means and blah 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 and I like anyway. real that's why I like I, I just think it, real you know no facades yeah. no illusions yeah. just be ourselves and and half the time we don't even know who we are until we start peeling our layers and even then it's still a mystery so I, yeah. I really appreciate you sharing with us and, and giving us so much of your time and and I encourage people to go to your your blog and your website and follow you on Facebook and Twitter and so forth because you're always giving us insights into these energy shifts and you're very um, regular and I love that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, the the little um the little whoosh of information just comes when it comes and when yeah. it comes I just have to open the laptop basically and type. That's yeah. just how it happens. So, well, I love being on the receiving end of that whoosh. <laughs> the whooshes <laughs> well, and the waves. <laughs> yeah, uh, Catherine, it's been so lovely to talk to you again. It has. You have a great show, great energy, great vibe, and great questions. Really great questions. Thank so, thank you. you. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that. And, and for all of you listening, please make sure you share, share with your friends, introduce them to Donna and to the shows, and subscribe to us on YouTube and so forth. Until next time. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Wasn't that amazing? Thank you to my guests for sharing with us today. Thank you for watching. Feel free to share the link. You can join us for live shows by going to Let's Get Real chattingwithcatherine.com and listen to the replays from the show page, preview guests, and explore links to our Facebook fan page, WordPress blog, and more. We are creating an exquisite world. Until next time, take care care.